everybody. Well, what I'm going to talk to you might look a little unconventional, so I would like you to be with me. In, with every word, you must be with me. If you miss a word, then you'll probably miss the bus. All of you, including me, believe that modern medicine is scientific. Let me tell you this history. Modern medicine became a science in the 12th century when the European universities accepted modern medicine as science. From then on, it has been following the conventional science of physics, chemistry, and biology. Unfortunately, even to date, it has not changed a wee bit. And we still use the linear laws of deterministic predictability in a dynamic, non-linear, unpredictable human body. Friends, things have changed now. And with the advent of quantum physics, which has now shown that energy and matter are just but the two faces of the same coin, we have now understood the human body a lot better. It was a few years ago that Dr. Alexis Carroll, a Nobel laureate, medical scientist, wrote a book called Man, the Unknown, where he said, there is no science of man, full stop. Now, I have written a book called Man, the Known, and we, I'll tell you what the medical science now believes and should believe in future as the science base of what we do to our patients, hapless patients, because patients have a lot of faith in us, and that's what's curing them. Now, come back to modern medical quantum physical concept of human body. It was Max Planck who said, consciousness is fundamental. Consciousness now is known as the universal energy, which you can call by different names. Some people call it as God, some people call it as nature. But what Max Planck calls is consciousness is fundamental, and all material is derived from consciousness. So, human body, in my concept, is immaterial. It is mental and spiritual. Spiritual doesn't mean God or religion. Spiritual simply means sharing and caring. So, the human body, as you say it, is a colony of 50 trillion individual human cells, which lived for millions of years as human beings, as individuals, and they were identically living all over the place. Over the millions of years, they have come together to form a colony because of economic reasons so that they can need not work everything they need not do individually, they can do it collectively. So this colony is called the human body, where every single cell of those 50 trillion cells, they love one another so much that if you now photograph them through what's called the biophoton camera, you can see them all in sync. When you see them in sync and happy, you are healthy. When they are out of sync, you are unhealthy. So disease is an altered state of the energy pattern of the body. So we can now photograph you and get you to see whether you've got any disease. Unfortunately, in modern medicine, we still use the reductionist ideas that body is made out of heart, lung, liver, kidney, brain, etc., etc., like a motor car. And we think if the heart is diseased, I can fix a new um, heart, just like a carburetor or motor car. It doesn't work that way. The whole body works together. As a matter of fact, if you, even if I apply a bit of an ointment here, you will be surprised, the biophotons in my brain change, biophotons in my leg change, which means we are one whole. In short, the word whole is very important here, and the human body is one whole, and treatment has to be holistic, and that's what we call the future of treatment, which is now accepted in American IOM, called whole person healing. WPH is the future. Now I come back to all of us. Now, the cells in me love the cells in you because you and I are the same energy and different parts of the same whole consciousness. We are bits of individual consciousness. And this follows the Indian philosophy of Sankhya where if you take a bit from the whole, the whole remains a whole, the bit becomes a whole. And this is the concept, and you'll be surprised, there's now a mathematical calculation for this, a beautiful mathematical formula which is very difficult even for great mathematicians to unravel. And it simply says that I, my cells love your cells. Now, supposing I hate you, let us say, I want to destroy you, I hate you. Then what happens is these cells get confused. And if I hate you, my own cells hate my own body. And I get disease. We didn't know why one gets disease. We only knew in linear mathematics how one gets disease. Today, with quantum physics, we can say, why do you get a disease? I have written an article which you can read in the, it is on the internet. It's called grudgeitis. You heard about appendicitis, you heard about pancreatitis, you heard about tonsillitis, but this is grudgeitis. When you grudge others, you want to hate someone. Friends, it is the mind that destroys you. It's the mind that, that really keeps you going. 
Now what happens with this sort of a thing is, when once you love another human being, that's what is called spirituality. Spirituality simply means sharing and caring. When I love others, want to share with others, my health improves. That's exactly what Ayurveda said, Aptopa Sevi Bhavet Arogyam. If you treat everyone as your near and dear ones, you will be healthy. Now I'll tell you how you get an illness and when you get an illness, how do you react to the illness? Now when an illness comes, let us say, our concept is, oh, this disease has come. You want to hate the disease? No, no. It's your friend. It has just come with an altered energy and you've got to love it, you've got to accept it and then it probably gets healed. Most of us think it is the doctor who cures me or the doctor who operates. I will ask a simple question to any doctor who says he cures. I want a doctor, the best doctor in India, to do a heart transplant on a dead body and I want that to heal. A heart transplant, even if the doctor, best doctor does it, heals only when the man is alive. And that is through what is called the immune system. Thank God, God has given us an immune system. Otherwise, our cells love so much that when once you come into this room, all of us would have been one syncytium, one mass of cells. We wouldn't have gone out individually. Individually, we look because of the individual immune systems. But it's only a maya. What we see in this world is maya, which the German scientist who found out E is equal to M, Hans Peter Du calls as Werklichkeit. Werklichkeit in German means a drama, a changing drama. So I see all of you here. And when I close my eyes, you're not there. So whether you're there or not is only a, not a reality, but it's a myth. Now this is the concept, if you understand, you can understand this is better. Now when you come to the cell, individual cell as you see here, this is an individual, whole individual is this cell. It can do everything that you do. It can breathe, it can understand, it can think, it can eat, it can excrete, everything it does. Now when they come together, they become a body and they do all this together. But over the years they found, instead of everybody doing everything, let some people do certain works. So they had different kinds of cells, which look different by in shape, but they all work together. So cells in the liver do something, which is a metabolic thing, it's a chemistry factory. The heart, it's just a pumping machine or a machine which gives a twist to the blood flow. Or the brain, which coordinates the whole body. So there are different kinds of cells, but the working is the same. Even a cancer cell, remember, remind me, I, I, I'm stressing on this, even a cancer cell works exactly like a normal cell. So cancer is not a disease, cancer is a repair mechanism which has lost its aim, when to stop. Supposing I cut, my cut will be, there will be a scar there. Scar is the beginning of a cancer. Supposing that scar overgrows, it becomes a cancer. So all the cells work alike. Now, like if you see the cell wall, this is the most important part of the cell. Well, the cell, cell this is a cell wall, individual cell wall. With a bilipid layer, you see those two rows of uh, um, sweet lime, I mean the fresh limes, they are all the lipid layers. Now so much so, this doesn't allow anything to go into the cell or come out of the cell. But there are those paths, the red thing called transmembrane protein, which is a channel to go in and out. And above that, you have the antenna to connect with the outside. Now you are born on the day your mother's ovum meets your father's spermatozoan and you become one protein speck, one cell, which is called the zygote. And that cell, its antenna, gets the connection from the universal consciousness. And you know, the man who was studying this was an atheist. And he was studying this and he found suddenly, oh, this has become now live. And when you die, the uh, consciousness just leaves you and you die. So much so he described human life as a television picture. You switch on the television, Lata Mangeshkar or the Hema Malini is dancing. Now, after some time you get fed up with the dance, you switch it off, Hema Malini is dead. Now, if you go to the dining room and your wife calls and there she is putting on the television, Hema Malini is dancing there. So, human being is like that. When they are born like the television screen, I am like the television screen, I am dancing here, but when I die, I disappear. But I am not in the television screen, remember that? What is in the television screen is the energy. So we are all energy and we are immaterial and that energy is the most important thing. And that's what the cell wall does. But the cell wall is a connection. And the connection shows how you can connect with the world. And the cell wall connection is the ligand which connects you with anything that you want. And that's where our whole universe connects with us through that ligand. And if you get disconnected from there, you probably die off. Now, future treatment of diseases, future therapeutics is not with chemicals. 
because these chemicals that we put into the system, whatever be it, it may be aspirin to statin, the chemicals are reductionist molecules which work chemistry-wise as dextrorotatory molecules where the human molecules work levorotatory. So it's a square plug in a round hole. So each time you take a medicine, irrespective of what medicine it is, the body says it is something outside, it's a poison. So the, the medicine is sent to the liver. So the liver tries to destroy it to the extent possible. Now what remains after the liver destroys comes out, which we teach our students as a first pass effect. After it passes through the liver, what comes out? And that's what we think affects. But in the bargain, every single medicine that we have put in, every single medicine that we have put in damages the liver. So it's no surprise that today's audit has shown, especially in the United States of America, because we don't have audit in India, that the leading cause of death, one of the leading causes of death is adverse drug reactions, ADR. Coming back to the future treatment, the future treatment is only through energy. And there are various kinds of energy treatments which our ancestors used to do. A lot of occult energies are being used like pranic healing, reiki, pranayama, yoga, etc., etc. But we have been working on the known three energies, electromagnetic energy, nuclear energy, and probably gravitational energy in some way. And this we have been doing for the last about 15 years. And we have got an organization called the World Academy of Authentic Healing Sciences where I've got 15 scientists working with me. Now this is the photograph of the energy pattern. This is the thing that we're working on, water for example, homeopathic medicines. This is water, water structure that is gone. The water structure is something which is very fascinating, it's got loose bonds. And any medicine you put into water, a drop of a medicine you put into water, when it gets into the loose bond, the water structure changes. After that, if you dilute it even a million times, the structure is changed. And that structure has got the energy and that treats. Now this water structure, we use that water structure and also use some simple silver nanoparticles in that. And when the silver nanoparticles get into that, the water becomes absolutely germicidal. Nothing grows in that. And we wanted to see how a salamander in your house, when you cut its tail, the tail grows. If you cut your tail, it won't grow. So we wanted to see whether it grows, and we did it. This was a boy who cut his finger. And this finger was caught in the machine, and the finger got completely cut off. There's no finger left. So what did we do? We didn't touch it. We just covered it with the silver mesh that I showed you, and gave a little current to change the polarity. And as you see, three days later, the finger becomes... Three days later, the finger became... Yeah, the finger became cleaner and clearer. Three days later, the finger became almost after one month, the finger became normal. And if you want to know what the finger was like, what the finger was like before, that's where the finger was and that's where the finger today is. So we have now been using it for various other things. Like for example, when a, when a policeman in Chennai, when a policeman in Chennai, came with this big pus, bag of pus, with his diabetic foot. The doctors wanted to cut off the foot, but this man refused because he said, if you cut off the foot, next life, I will not have a foot at all. So we, he wanted to do something or die. So we cleaned the whole thing and put the, our energy machine into it. Next slide. And you see after three months, he has got a normal foot. And here is another lady of mine who has got a blood pressure of 240 by 140, and she had a block in this vessel here. Whole aorta was blocked below the kidney. You can see there, there's no runoff at all and the kidneys were so small. So I put the machine there, it's just like a cell phone, and three months later, what you see is, lot of new vessels have grown, the kidneys have become normal, her blood pressure came down to 120 by 80, and she is very happy, she's walking about. Now we have been doing this for various things, starting from cancer to common cold, you can use energy, and we are refining it. Our job is to authenticate simple healing methods in any system, be it Ayurveda, homeopathy, or any system for that matter, because all systems simply mean something that you help the patient to heal. And who heals? The patient himself heals. Why he heals that? His body naturally has to heal. I'll give you an example. Man gets a heart attack, God forbid. Now what happens is, at the center of the heart attack, the cells die. The minute the cells die, if nobody does anything, and no doctor interferes, the neighboring cells say, oh my God, my friend has died. They love one another so much. They slip out and come there and occupy. There's a second stage. Cell death is stage one. The second stage is cell slipping. When the cell slips out, there's a mother holding the cell, which is cement, which we call as collagen. The mother says, where has my son gone? 
and the mother knows my son would never go for anything other than helping others. He must have gone to help somebody. I will also help him. So it produces more collagen. So fibroblastic proliferation. You got a very strong scar. Now the cells far away, they can't do that. They feel bad. I have not done anything. So they say, okay, let me become stronger. So they become hypertrophied. Four things happen. Cell death, cell slipping, fibroblastic proliferation, and hypertrophy. These four things, what is called remodel the whole heart. So if you get a heart attack, and if you're lucky not to die, because 60% of people who get a heart attack don't even get to see next second. They die. The remaining 40% bakras only we, we you know, do all kinds of things. But even those, by chance, by chance, they don't come to the hospital and still survive. They probably get a beautiful heart. A study in Bristol and Sheffield showed that heart attack patients with good risk, which means heart attack patients who have no pain and who are alive, are better off left at home than taken to the hospital and then looked after because mortality is much better left at home. Now this is because the body heals itself. And this healing is a process which can be helped by our lifestyle. So the future must be for wellness lifestyle, which Ayurveda says, Swastasya, Swastha, Rakshitam. Preserve the health of the well. And this is what I call as a wellness concept, which requires simple things. One, most important thing is the mind. The mind filled with universal compassion. Mind without negative feelings, no hatred, no jealousy, no greed, no pride, no anger. Because you don't have to be pride because for every cell in your body, you have nine cells which are germ cells, not your cells. Because germs are a part of us. So how can you say, I, I am nobody, I am nobody. Even to say, I, I must get nine germ cells permission for one cell of mine. <laughs> so when once you know that, when once you know that, you become so humble. And humility in Indian concept is the virtue of education. And humility is a health giving thing. So if you are humble and genuinely compassionate, you will be very healthy. Next thing is, eat in moderation. Whatever you want to eat, eat in very, very less and then every day have some exercise. And do something for others. This is the most important thing. Kshamavad, aptopasevi bhavet arogyam. And data, be a data, be a giver. Human body, human body is not a machine made out of different parts. Human body is a colony of happy 50 trillion cells with two and a half trillion germs of all kinds of germs. So friends, it's very simple. Again, healthy living is simple living, high thinking, loving others, and trying to do something for society. Thank you very much.